in that panoply of gender that is available to us now, I don't know. I would, I, I, I would have another pronoun, maybe, you know? Isaac Mizrahi. Hello. <laughs> what have we got here? We've got some rosé right. and some Pellegrino, which is Lovely. sort of my drink of choice. And here's the thing, I'm like a real lightweight when it comes to alcohol, so it's a lot of water. So you can just you sip, can that's fine. Yeah, is it's that okay not, with you? Of course. Chin Thank chin, you. baby, chin, chin chin. I am gonna drink it because... A sip mm. won't kill you. You talk a lot in your book, in your new book, I Am. Mm -hmm. You like that, that I said that? Yeah, I did like uh, that. I, like I love that. the book. I, and it's so detailed. And you talk you. about your childhood in depth. Yeah. How did you go from there to here? I, I, I come from this like kooky, repressive kind of background, you know, Sephardic Jewish, which is rather orthodox. And I had to get out of there. I had to get away from there. And Originally so, from Syria, right? Your well, family. Well, my like, family, like, two here, generations. Sure. Yeah, that's a small kind of like community and they are really insular you know and 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 they sort of don't really it's not the most progressive or liberal kind of environment you know and so growing up in that the, the clearest way that i could see out was to make this kind of like money in order to put myself like away from them permanently like to have my own house my own life my own people etc right so you seem to wrestle with family expectations of you yeah. and not fitting with what they wanted. I remember going to Hebrew school and being told like, you know, homosexuals were supposed to be stoned to death, right? You're not supposed to make art. They don't really like art because it's graven images, right? And so that's basically everything I am between art and being a homosexual. It's like my nose on my face, right? And so I don't know, there was something so it's such a crazy thought, even at that age, like, you're gonna tell me that I'm dead before I even start here? You know, it was like, it just did not make sense. And so somehow I was resilient enough to understand that something was wrong and somebody was misunderstanding, you know? I kept having this vision about where I was going and I pretended that I was there already. That is really interesting. Successful people, I think, often do that. It's they a project. crazy thing. You project. You have like a vision of something and then you kind of fake it till you make it. <laughs> so when did that start? The vision of fashion design was it, I mean, because it seems like you were, you were designing puppet theaters. Yeah, that's right. I was always making clothes and making puppets and sewing. And then at some point it just, it occurred to me that I was not this beautiful, castable kind of Hollywood type of actor, you know? I was a character actor, but you know when you're that age, you don't really see things clearly. Yeah. So I kind of took a turn. I took a turn and went into fashion, you know. I remember you become the it guy. I mean, did it feel that way to you? Yeah, You yeah. were on fire. Yes, and also I was confused. <laughs> And I was like confused about, harried. Confused about what? Oh, I was confused about what the hell was going on. I could not understand this. This crazy fuss that people like were making people about would, me. Yeah. You've, you write about that. You've always been hard on yourself. Well, yes. Like unaccepting of success. It's not it even about like that. that. It's more about just skeptical about everything. You know, like I am not the least skeptical person you know. I am really skeptical. I mean, you can tell my mother, right? I called her to tell, tell her that my book was on the bestseller list. Yeah. So I was like, hey, mom, my book is on the bestseller list. And the first thing she said was, what number? You know, so you understand, right? Like, this is where you it get comes it. From. So I, I keep like, talking about like this new modern idea about sweaters. All like, of my friends are obsessed with Isaac on QVC. <laughs> That's called oatmeal, and that is one of my favorite colors. It is not oat couture. It isn't, it isn't you know, oat moan, mode, it's, it's like, it's affordable. It's, it's affordable and it's, it makes sense. And you know, it's on easy pay, you know, it's really accessible. And so that's what I like. Has that moved toward the masses, made your life more stable, more possible? I, I, I wonder what it's done for you. It makes my life make more sense, you know, because it, it, it resonates more with who I am as a person, as a human being. Like, I just like it better than I like kind of making these very, very exclusive 
and beautiful things. And maybe someday I would revisit it because it isn't, it's a lot of fun. Revisit you know, it's a couture? Lot yeah, it's a lot of fun to do that, absolutely. I know and there are people waiting for that too. I know, well, we'll see. <laughs> I noticed in the book, I noticed that you mentioned gender identity a couple times. You know, what's going on with gender identity now isn't man or woman or he or she. You're allowed to pick whatever part of the spectrum There's you a want. Spectrum, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I were if if I had the choice, the choices that the young people have today, I might have picked a much more feminine persona. It might have been a whole different ball game for me, you know? Um, not that I'm uncomfortable in my skin, but I am slightly uncomfortable in my skin, you know? But if I had begun as a young thing to think about this idea that there were options, I would be, I don't know exactly what, but in that panoply of gender that is available to us now, I don't know, I would, I, I, I would have another pronoun, maybe, you know? I'm arming myself with a big <laughs> sip of this, yeah. Favorite thing about New York City? Favorite thing about New York City is like this contrast of like really ugly things next to really beautiful things. And the worst thing about New York City? The worst thing about New York City is like the generification that's taking place. You know, it's very gentrified. It's very kind Everything of looks monogamous. The same. Mono monotonous, yeah. Monogamous, New York City. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. Your style in one word. Surprise. Barbara Streisand or Liza Minnelli? Both. <laughs> Together. Hand in hand <laughs> in this living room. This was so fun. So fun. Well, liquor you. makes everything, <laughs> wine spritzers. Rosé spritzers make everything better. I'm telling you. Happy spring Happy to spring. you. Happy yeah. spring. Thank you so much. <laughs>